Good morning, everyone. This is Jeffy Kennedy, author of Fantasy Romance and Romantic Fantasy. I'm here with my first cup of coffee. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Happy chair dance. Today is Thursday, March 24th. Um, only a week of March left. And which means that the first quarter of 2022 is almost gone. How did this happen? We don't know. It's a mystery. I always love that line in Shakespeare in Love with the, I can't think of the actor's name, but the theater owner where he's like, it'll work out. And people are like, how, how? And he's like, I don't know. It just, <laughs> uh, yeah, something like that. That was probably bad. Uh, not a brilliant anecdote. There's another movie quote from there for you. So, my week is going well. The uh, 2,000 words a day is working remarkably well. Um, I'm, yeah, on track so far this week. We'll see what happens. Uh, yesterday, Dorinda proposed a slight change to our uh, morning routine. So, we're starting at 8 o'clock this morning. Well, almost 8 o'clock. I um, there, 8 o'clock was the plan. <laughs> and then I, as you guys may or may not know, I don't set an alarm. I wake up naturally, which is like something that I cling to. I don't want to have to set an alarm. Now that I'm a full-time writer, it's like the one gift I give myself. It's a, a special thing for me that I get to wake up naturally. Otherwise, I tend to be a real bitch of a boss. So this morning, for whatever reason, it, it's very interesting. If you do sleep on a natural calendar, you will find that you, um, and I've been doing this for what, almost seven years now. Wow. Uh, your sleep time, or at least my sleep time waxes and wanes from night to night as some nights are shorter and some are longer. And last night was a longer night for whatever reason. Um, because as I recall, I think I was in bed by like nine. I usually, I'd start turning into a pumpkin after about eight o'clock. And of course the daylight savings time has kind of messed that up. But, um, you know, my evenings are very low key and I start winding down early and I'm one of those people who falls asleep really fast. So I was asleep for a few hours and then my elderly cat, Isabel, beautiful, floofy Isabel, um, she doesn't get as much press as Jackson does. I'm not quite sure why. Maybe because Jackson was like the kitten and Jackson's very charismatic. And I think feel like Isabel does get short shrift because sometimes people will say, well, you know, does because because visitors, you know, Jackson is so gregarious and so engaging and charismatic. And everyone's well, people will say be like, Well, does Isabel do anything? <laughs> Almost in those exact words, you know, like, is there anything special about her? Um, Isabel's also a Maine Coon cat and she is a blue smoke Maine Coon cat. And I'll put her photo on the show notes here. So, and I realize I'm going off, off topic, but Hey, that's the brand here at first cup of coffee. So last night, Isabel, Isabel is now 16 and she sleeps a lot and she's deaf. And last night, she every once in a while she wakes up. I don't know if they're nightmares or I've tried to look it up and it's like a, a kind of dementia in cats. Otherwise, she doesn't seem to have any kind of dementia. But she woke up and she was crying and crying. And she has this very loud meow now that she's deaf. And I was sound asleep, but for some reason that penetrated, which very little does. I often joked, um, or I don't joke. David says that the great thing that he brings to our relationship is that if the house burns down during the night, that he will carry me out of it and save my life because he thinks I'd sleep through it. So this penetrated and I got up and I didn't know David wasn't in bed. He's often up at night. So I went blearily out looking and he like came out of the kitchen and I said, where is she? And he said, I don't know. And she was back in his office. And that was at 11.55, so I'd been asleep for a few hours. 
And so I picked her up and brought her in to bed with me, which she just doesn't come do on her own anymore. She used to sleep with me every night, but now she sleeps in his office, um, which is the warmest room in the house. And I think that's why I'm interested to see if this changes as summer comes on. But we have um, brick floors with radiant heat and I have the temperature in his office. David's just, I mean, he's skinny, skinnier than I am. And, uh, and he's just, uh, you know, as he gets older, he gets colder. So the warmth in his office come guest room is uh, up there. And Isabel has this little throw rug that we've put down for her. And it's this one corner of the floor that she's figured out is like where the radiant heat gathers. There's certain places where the floor is definitely warmer than others. And the cats have found those in their feline way. So she spends a lot of time sleeping on that little rug in his office. And, but I brought her into bed with me since she seemed disturbed and she slept by my pillow for most of the night. So that was nice because I know I woke up once around four and she was there and I went back to sleep. And normally if I go back to sleep like that, it means another hour and a half. And sometimes I'll calculate it because it's like four is a little early to get up, but usually like another hour and a half. And that's right in line with, you know, like the scientific studies on sleep cycles that a full cycle is an hour and a half more or less. So, but then I woke up at six 30. Oops. So, um, yeah, we're supposed to start at eight. It's seven 57 now, but we moved it to eight 15 at my behest. Dorinda was ready because she said she wants to to start an hour earlier, which is big because she originally, um, for her meeting me at nine was a lot for her. And I had, um, you guys know, I track everything, you know, I was like, well, you know, I'm usually starting by nine. We could just make it be nine. But for me, writing wise, the earlier I start, the better off I am. Um, and I do have <laughs> graphs to show that. Uh, I get better word counts if I start earlier. So this works great for me. It's just a little bit of adjustment, especially after daylight savings time kicking in. But it'll be interesting to see how that works. I'm going to keep doing the 2K per day this week. And then next week, I might see if I can go up to 2.5. Um, yeah, we'll just sort of see. I'm going to experiment a little bit. I'm going to be curious. We um, have some travel coming up, so that's going to change things around some. Uh, we are going to go up to Black Hawk, Colorado and meet up with David's siblings for a couple of nights. Just a little get together. And I'm going to do the, it's a, it's a casino hotel thing. And I don't really like gambling, but they do have a spa and I'm going to do, I've been dying for a body scrub and they do a body scrub and wrap. So very excited for that. And then at, on April 7th and 8th, I will be down in Portales, New Mexico, fabulous Portales, which is, uh, where Dorinda Jones lives. Uh, and it's down right near the Texas Panhandle, but it's where Jack Williamson, famed science fiction writer, is from. And I'm going to be down there and doing some panels and stuff. I believe they will also be streaming. Looks like some interesting panel topics, too. There's a new guy in charge this year, David Sweeten, who seems to be, I haven't met him in real life yet, but he seems to be um, just really on the ball and really smart. And he thinks I'm a great writer. So, you know, clearly he has excellent taste and discernment. So I'm looking forward to this. Uh, last year I was on a weird panel that <laughs> it's, it's, this happens to me a lot. And I think it might be the whole crossover fantasy romance, um, woman writer with kissing in her books. Is it YA? Is it really not fantasy confusion? 
but there are certain conferences, especially these very little ones, where I think what happens is that the organizers don't really, <laughs> this always sounds bad, they don't know who I am. Uh, and I think this can happen to any of us. You know, like there are certain people that they know what they write. But what happens is, is if you are a writer that, like whoever's doing programming, hasn't actually read, if they don't know much about you, then they end up sort of sticking you on panels in weird places. Like I got put on a panel, that, like a great transgressor on this, and I've complained about it before, is Mile High Con up in Denver, which I like to go up there because I have family up there. Uh, Denver's my hometown. Uh, a lot of people in the area I know. I, I like Mile High Con, but they always put me on these fucking weird panels. Like once they put me on a superhero panel. You know, and it's like, I don't really write superheroes. Or not even really. I don't write superheroes at all. And I wasn't sure what I was supposed to say. And so last year with the old organizer on the Jack Williamson lectureship, I got put on this panel on... What was it? It was like writing science fiction or something. Oh, I wish I could remember the topic, but it was really kind of strange. I was like, I do not know why I'm on this panel. And the bad thing is, is there are a couple of reasons for writers to do panels. Um, one is that it's fun. Um, some of the most gratifying times that I've had as a writer is being on a panel with other wonderful writers where we end up having these amazing conversations. That's the pinnacle because then you get a lot out of it being on the panel. So that's a good reason. Um, the reason that we do it is promo is to, you know, get ourselves out there and have people know who we are. The other reason to do it is to be nice, to, you know, pay it forward, contribute to the community. It's like, and I, and a lot of writers view it that way because they'll be like, I don't want to be on more than one panel for the conference. And I'm like, really? Well, then why are you going? What are you doing there? And they're like, oh, it's so exhausting. Really? You know, it's like, you know, they'll be like, I'm on three panels this conference and one every day and it's exhausting. Like, oh, well. What do you do all day? <laughs> I know, I'm bitchy. I just think about people who have jobs that, you know, like where they actually have to work really hard. I, well, I will always say that being a writer is mentally draining and you really have to balance that creative flow and be smart about how you do it, especially if you're a full-time writer or not even especially, it's, I think it's worse if you're trying to maintain another career and kids and family and all of that too. Uh, you know, you really have to balance that energy, but you know, some of these writers I know for a fact have like never had a full-time job and you know, there are jobs that, you know, like if you are working at it all day long, that's a, it's a lot. It's, just, you know, a lot of running around in meetings and dealing with stuff. And I will always say that the most, the hardest job I ever had was being a cocktail waitress, you know, full stop. I am so glad that I don't have to make my living as a cocktail waitress because waiting tables sucks, you guys. It sucks and it's really hard. And I know that people who haven't done it sit back and be like, well, all she does is scurry back and forth between the kitchen. It's like, you have no idea. Absolutely no idea. Which is why I always tip well, unless somebody really is phoning it in. Anyway, so I'm sure I had a point in there somewhere. I got interviewed on, um, was it Tuesday afternoon? Yeah, Tuesday afternoon by the Kingdom of Thirst podcast, Abigail, um, great interviewer. We had so much fun. I really enjoyed her podcast. I should go ahead and link to it in here so that, um, in fact, I'm going to type that in right now so that you guys can check it out. But mine will air in a couple of weeks. Um, Kingdom of Thirst 
podcast. But she was talking about um, this podcast about first cup of coffee and just saying how um, relaxing it is that it's Zen. And I love that. I love that. It's, she said, it's just like having a conversation with your friend over coffee and it's just like a nice chill thing to do. And I love that. I think that's awesome. So if I can't think of stuff to stay, say, I feel like I can always fall back on the fact that, uh, that I'm just offering a Zen experience here. Actually, really, it's more of a Taoist experience, but we're not going to, to quibble lines there. So um, my point, and I did have one. Oh, that Dorinda and I are starting earlier um, and maybe trying to get our three hours done by noon, which is great. And yesterday I was done by like 1130 and uh, I got more stuff done on the to-do list. You guys will be delighted to hear it. I am trying not to obsess about like getting everything off the list, which I think is helpful. You know, it's that, um, you know, like the measurable goals, the ones that you can actually reach. So but I got several things done off the list. And so that's great. I got right familiar uploaded the audiobook. So just waiting for approval on that. And then that will be out soon. And other just little piddly things. Oh, and so this is where I was had kind of started with all of this. I did register for Worldcon in Chicago at the end of August, beginning of September. ShyCon, so I am planning to attend that. And I also went ahead and registered for World Fantasy Con in November. So planning to be at that. And I will be at a Polycon in July. So I need to get, in fact, let me make a note here, put this on my list. I'll get Corrine to put these appearances on the website. So that'll be good. So it's like, um, yeah, <laughs> that's the sound of the, uh, the world gradually sort of like revving up again. We're kicking into gear. The other thing that happened yesterday is I got to email with an amazing writer, uh, someone who I particularly fangirl. Got to exchange emails, you guys. I can't tell you what it is yet, but it's very exciting. Very exciting news. Um, not my career related, but otherwise related. So if you are um, canny, your little brains will be thinking about what could this be? Uh, yeah, so it was um, yeah particular little fangirl moment there that I got to email with this writer whom I admire who I admire. I almost never use whom. I just dislike whom. I once had an editor, my Kensington editor had a special note saying, this author hates whom, don't use it. So, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see how shaking it up here a little bit will do and feeling good about things. So on that note, I'm going to go and meet up with the fabulous Dorinda Jones and I will talk to you all tomorrow. You take care. Bye-bye.